This is Geometry Unit 8. This is the review for quiz number 2. We're going to look at some definition terms. Point F over here would be called the point of tangency. Angle FHG, because the vertex is at the center of the circle, it is called a central angle. Angle EBD. Notice the vertex is on the side of the circle, so it's called an inscribed angle. This is a segment because there's no arrows or anything. So segment HG. HG goes from the center to the edge of the circle, so that's a radius. Segment DB, it goes from the side of the circle to a different side of the circle. It does not contain the center, so it's a chord. C is the center of the circle. BE, again, that's a segment. BE is a chord because it has endpoints on the side of the circle, but it also contains the center, so it's considered a diameter. This DB is an, has arrows on either side, so we're talking about line DB. Line DB would be called a secant. And then we have line AG has arrows, so we know it's a line. AG, that's going to be a tangent. You could call it external tangent. It's a tangent line. Here in the diagram, we're supposed to identify if AB is a tangent we have to identify if it makes a right angle. Right here, the picture definitely shows it has a right angle. It's not supposed to be there. We're supposed to identify, does it truly have a right angle there? So the way that we would do that is use C squared equals A squared plus B squared. C squared being the hypotenuse, which would be 85. A squared being one of the legs and b squared being the other leg. We have 85 and we square that we get 7,225. 51 squared is 2,601 and 68 squared is 4,624. So we could add the 2,601 to here. And on this side, we'll get 7,225. There it equals. So yes, um, yes, it's a tangent. But because it's equal, we know that triangle ABC is a right triangle. Therefore, three dots can represent therefore. Therefore, segment AB is tangent to circle C. Now we can look here at this one. The question is, is AB tangent? is the radius 90 degrees to AB? That's the big question. So we're going to take the hypotenuse squared, leg squared, and leg squared. Our 19 squared comes out to be 361. 8 squared is 64. And 16 squared is our 256. 
So when we add 64 to that, we're going to get 320. So this does not equal. So we not a right triangle. So not tangent. For number 12, we're supposed to know that it, AB is a tangent. If it's a tangent, what is the radius of the circle going to be if these are the other measurements? You need to recognize that 32 is from the edge of the circle extended out to point A. Well, if this is truly a right triangle, we can use hypotenuse squared equals leg squared plus leg squared. The hypotenuse is x plus 32. And we would square that because the hypotenuse, x and 32. It's not 32x. That means something different. This is x plus 32. And the two leg lengths. Now the big question is, how do you square x plus 32? you need to write it twice. You cannot distribute the square through. And then how do you multiply two binomials? That's what these parentheses would be called since they have two terms inside of it, a binomial. You're going to use something called FOIL. You could use the box method too. We're going to say x times x is x squared. x times 32 is 32x. Notice how the x multiplied both terms. We're now going to come over to the 32 and multiply both terms. So we get 32x again, and we get 1,024 when you multiply 32 times 32. x squared, there's nothing we can do with that. And 56 squared is 3,136. So from this point, we're just going back to algebra. So we're going to move like terms over to the same side of our equal sign. That's going to cross the x squareds out completely. We're going to subtract the 1024 and bring that over to this side. That's going to leave us with our like terms of 64x equaling 2112. Divide by 64, and x is going to equal 33. So if x equals 33, and we're supposed to find the length of AC, so AC is going to equal 33 plus 32, which is 65. Notice how the hypotenuse is 65. That's supposed to be longer than either of the legs, but it has to be shorter than the sum of the legs. So 32 for the radius, and 56, those are the two legs. 32 for the radius, or 33, sorry, 33 for the radius, plus the 32 makes our 65. Let's, let's try this one. We're going to do the same thing. We're looking for a hypotenuse. A hypotenuse is always across from the 90 degrees. So we have our x plus 49, and we square that. Leg squared plus the other leg squared. So we have to write our x plus 49. We have to write that twice. And that's going to equal x squared plus 63 squared. To write that twice, and then we're going to multiply. We're going to distribute to the first term, to the second term. Then we do the inside terms and the last terms. 49 squared comes out to be 2,000. 401. 63 squared is 
3,969. So we'll collect our like terms by subtracting our x squared to the opposite side of the equal sign. We can subtract 2,401. That'll give us 1,568 with our 98 on this side. So we're going to divide by 98 to both sides. 98, not 90x, 9x. So 98 crosses out and x is going to be 16. That means the radius of our circle would be 16. We're supposed to look for the length of AC also. So AC is 40 equals 49 plus 16. So that should add up to equal 65 also in this case. Just a coincidence that the hypotenuse was the same. Okay, number 14. You're supposed to find the values of x and y, then find the measures of the angles where the variables are located. So if we want to find the value of x, notice how x opens up and touches at m and it also opens up and touches at K. So we're looking at our arc. The measure of angle J equals half the measure of arc MK. So J is X. Mark of M, the uh, arc of MK is 132. So x is going to be 66. So that's also the measure of angle j. Another way that we could do it, because we have both opposite angles, we know that if a quadrilateral is inscribed in a circle, then opposite angles are supplementary. If if a quadrilateral is inscribed in a circle, then its opposite angles are supplementary. So we're going to be able to say that y plus 114 has to equal 180. We'll subtract the 114, and we'll get 66. Well, 66 for this also. Just a coincidence that the values are coming out to be the same. 180 minus the 114 is also 66. So in this case, look at angle X opens up and touches H, opens up and touches F. So that arc comes all the way around. So the measure of angle G equals half of its intercepted arc. The measure of arc FH. Well, what is the measure of G? It's X. The measure of arc. And it looks like this would actually be over 180. So maybe we should name it with three letters. H-E-F. Because when you add these together, you're going to get 183. So when we divide that by 2, we get 91 and a half. So that's the value of x. Well, y, we're going to do a very similar. 
we're going to take half of 212. So y equals half of 212. So y equals 106. In this case, if a quadrilateral is inscribed in a circle, then opposite angles are supplementary. That's exactly what's going to happen in this case. We have 2y plus 104 equals 180. Subtract your 104. We get 76. Divide that by 2. And y is 38. So the measure of angle K is going to be double that, which is 76 degrees. Then for our other angle, opposite angles are supplementary if the quadrilateral is inscribed. So we know that 5x plus 110 has to equal 180. We subtract the 110, so 5x equals 70. So that's the measure of angle J, of course. But x itself, we're going to divide by 5. 5 goes into 7 once with 2 left over. So 70 divided by 5 is 14. For the next directions, it looks like they're on he this page. We have diameters of our circle determine if the arc is minor or major or a semicircle. So, because number 17, NQ, has just two letters for that arc, we know that that's going to be a minor arc. And here we have 180, because this is a diameter. So we're going to take 180 minus the 81 to get 99, minus the 73 to get 26. So this leftover angle is 26. That's going to make, because this is a central angle, that makes the arc also 26 makes the arc also 81 and 73. Notice, this is going to be a common mistake on the quiz. Central angles equal its intercepted arc. But an, an inscribed angle, kind of looks like this problem down here, is going to be half the intercepted arc. So watch what you're working with. This is 73, so vertical angles, they also indicate that they're congruent. Here we have a diameter, so it adds up to 180. So we'll minus our 73, and we get 107. So our arc is also going to be 107. So now we should be ready to answer these. NQ, the measure of arc NQ is going to be 81 plus 26. That looks like 107. Now we have three letters. So that we know that that's not a minor arc. MRP was more than a semicircle, larger than that. So this is a major arc. The major arc is going to be the measure of MRP is going to be 180 plus the 26 more. So we're going to get 206. MNQ, three letters, so we know it's not a minor arc. MNQ goes from one end of the diameter to the other end of the diameter. So we know that that's a semicircle. In a semicircle, the measure will always equal 180. MR, because it's only two letters, 
it should be a minor arc. Here we have a minor arc, so the measure of MR, MR is 107. It's going to be the same as the central angle. PQ, PQ is two letters, so we know it's going to be a minor arc. And the measure of arc PQ is going to equal 26. Here we have arc MQN. So it's almost all the way around the circle from M to Q to N. It's everything but the 73. So we know that that's a major arc. And the measure of MQN is going to be 360, not including the 73. So that should be 287. No, maybe not. Take our 360 and subtract our 73, and that's 2, yes, 287. Very well. Number 23, we're looking for the measure of BC. We're looking for this arc right there. The inscribed angle equals half of the intercepted arc. The inscribed angle equals half of its intercepted arc. So the measure of angle A equals half of the measure of arc BC. So 37 equals half the measure of arc BC. So we can multiply by the denominator. We're going to double what the angle is to figure out what the arc is. The arc is going to be twice the angle, or the angle is half the arc. So we get 74 is the measure of arc BC. On this side, arc BC here is going to be the same as the central angle. Central angle is equal to its intercepted arc. The central angle is always equal to its intercepted arc. So the measure of angle BOC is going to equal the measure of arc BC. So 123, 132, sorry. 132 is going to equal the measure of arc BC. And also, now if we look back here at angle A, notice that angle A also comes up and it touches at point B and touches at point C. So that's called an inscribed angle. An inscribed angle is always half of the intercepted arc. So the measurement of angle A is going to equal half the measurement of arc BC. So the measurement of angle A is going to equal half of 132. That's going to be 66. Here we're looking for arc AC. Well, if we have an inscribed angle, we know that the measure of angle C equals half of the of its inscribed angle. Well, I'm sorry. The inscribed angle 
equals half of the intercepted arc. So, if the angle is 48, then we're going to multiply by 2 to get 96 is the measure of arc AB. So this is going to be 96. If that's 96, notice these two chords. These two chords are the same measure. So that means their arcs are going to be the same. So if it's 360 all the way around, we're going to subtract 96 from it to leave our major arc divided by 2. So 360 minus 96 is going to be 264. And then we're going to divide that into two equal pieces. And we're going to get 132. So both of these are 132. So the measure of arc AC equals 132. Here we're supposed to find out the measurement of angle JKM. From J to K to M is right here. Well, if two inscribed angles, notice that they open up. And they both intercept the same arc. This guy opens up and touches at JM, and this guy opens up and touches at JM. So we could say if two inscribed angles intercept the same arc, then they are congruent. So since angle L is 28, I know angle K is 28. So the measurement of angle JKM is going to be 28 also. Arc JKM is everything but this arc. J to K to M is all the way around, not counting this arc. Well, this arc is double the inscribed angle. So to double the inscribed angle, 28 times 2 gives us 56. So 56 is JM. So to figure out the measure of JKM, arc JKM, we're going to take 360 and subtract the 56. So we're going to get 304. BAC is the inscribed angle, which is half of the arc. So the measurement of angle A equals half the measurement of arc BC. BAC is the same thing as angle A. BAC. So the measurement of BAC is going to equal half of 158. So it goes into there seven times. 79 degrees is going to be the measurement of this should be an angle. I'm sorry I wrote that wrong. And this is also an angle. We're supposed to be finding the the measure of the angle, not the arc, sorry. The arc is already given. Uh, B, oh, BAC would be on this side. Anyway. 
the measure of angle BAC, that's the angle, which is the same as angle A, is 79. We're supposed to find the measure of angle BAC. We're supposed to find this angle here. Well, notice we have a diameter because it contains the center point. So we have a semicircle over here. So we know this is 180. So 180 minus the 55 gives us 125. So this is 125. And if we take our 125 and divide that by 2, because the inscribed angle is equal half of the arc, we get 62.5. So the measurement of angle BAC, you could call it just angle A, equals 62.5. Then we're supposed to find this arc. This is the arc that is intercepted by the inscribed angle down here. So we know that it's going to be twice. So we're going to get 96. The measure of arc AD equals 96. Here we have a circle. We have a 90 degree angle here in the middle. We're supposed to find arc AB and also arc BDA. It's a long way around there. So what I notice is I have a diameter. So I have a semicircle that's coming over here. So that's 180. 180 take away the 90 leaves me with 90. Then I have two identical measures. So if you divide that by two, we're going to get 45 for each one of these arcs. That would be true for the central angles also. So I know that the measurement of arc AB is 45. Now to figure out arc BDA, which is everything but that 45, we're going to say 360 minus the 45, which is 315. So the measure of arc BDA equals 315. Here, we're looking for the big arc, and we're also looking for our angle. Well, to find the angle, you already need to know the big arc. So we have a full circle here. Part of the circle is 114. So we're going to subtract the 114 to figure out 246. So this arc all the way out, the big arc, the measurement of arc PQR equals 246. Then to figure out the angle, the measurement of angle T equals half the 246, the big arc minus the small arc. So we're going to take our 246 and subtract the 114. We get 132. So the measure of angle T, or also known as PTR, is half of that, which is 66. Here, we're looking for the measure of angle CBA, right there. Well, notice you have a diameter, and the angle touches the edge of the diameter. So if you have a diameter, we have 180 as a semicircle, 
This is an inscribed angle touching the endpoints of the diameter, so it's going to be half of the 180. So it's going to be a right angle, or 90 degrees. So the measurement of angle CBA equals 90. Next, we need to try to figure out what arc AC is going to be. Well, to figure out AC, we do need to know one more bit of information. We don't have it here. Oh, no, that's BC. Arc AC, it really should be with three letters. So let's call it arc ABC. The measurement of arc ABC is 180. I read that as BC, but it was really ABC. We didn't have enough information to figure out that one. We don't know that angle or anything on this side. All right, last one. If the hypotenuse of a triangle in 31 if the hypotenuse is 12.8, find the radius. We have a circle. We have a diameter. That diameter happens to be the hypotenuse of our right triangle. But more importantly, the hypotenuse of the right triangle is also the diameter. So if the diameter is 12.8, the diameter equals 2 times the radius. So 12.8 equals 2 times the radius. Divide this by 2 and we'll get 6.4 equals the radius. 6.4 on either side would be the radius of our circle. Good luck on quiz number two.